Okay. Just checking. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. Now it's, nope. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Don't know what I'm talking about. Good morning. Look. Ta-da. Yeah, except for the sleeves. He's got a sweater. Wouldn't it be so, no. It, I'm not doing, I'm not keeping this sleeveless. It will have sleeves. I just wanted to show off the progress on it. Ta-da. It looks so. I might stand up again in a second, but you know, we have to do introductions and stuff, so. You know, uh, oh, hang on. Okay, good morning and welcome. Ooh. Ooh. No, funky thing with my, doesn't matter. <laughs> my hair is always burning. Welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow. The like, Adventures of Liz and Rebecca. Um, I'm Rebecca. Ooh, I'm noticing a hole behind my head. We're missing fiber space, Liz. Um, no, you don't have to fix it. Uh, I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in downtown cold and windy and everything else. Vermont, and the North clouds Carolina. are squeezing snow out. So I'm wearing my it's snow squeezing dress. snow out. I, I was saying Brevard, North Carolina, but squeezing snow is more important. Yes, there were little pebbles of snow on my windshield this morning. I'm Liz. I'm the minion there. Yeah, <laughs> let's get that out before we keep going. Um, <laughs> The, the Northeast is getting hammered right now, but we have, um, we had a little bit of snow and ice and something this weekend. We were glad to be. Yes, the power flickered right before I left the house today. So we will see what condition my house is in when I get home, because the wind can do more damage than the ice did this weekend. And today is supposed to be a blustery, windy, 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 windy. That might be why our first appointment who we said we could help outside if she needed more yarn, made an appointment to come in. It's cold oh, outside. Yeah. It's, speaking of, it's cold out there. It's Groundhog Day. Bernie, Bernie watched the, the, the virtual because they're not yeah. having... Oh, oh, they said on the news it was like only Punxsutawney Phil and his inner circle. Yeah. I'm like, who the... It's, all, it's, it's all the guys in the Texas The guys in the, the top hats and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway... He, For he, non-Americans, hopefully you know the tradition of Groundhog Day. We look at a rodent and see if it, and it's supposed to predict if, if it's going to be more winter. If it shadow, it's more winter. If it doesn't, Take it's, a look outside. It's going to be more winter. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry, Bernie. Hmm? Bernie live streamed it because, you know. Why not? Why not? He saw his shadow. Does that mean six more, six weeks, more of weeks of winter? Which okay. I could have told you, uh, but. It's you know. cold outside. And, um, oh, here's the fun, here's my fun thing is, um, how are you doing out there? I'm distracted. There's loud noises outside. Hmm. Um, we locked the door, right? Yeah. Okay. Then who cares? Um, so here's my thing is the local news, which is still South Carolina, because we're close to South Carolina. Yeah. They did, they did a thing on, I want to say Murphy or somewhere else having their own groundhog tradition. Ooh. And I'm like, what about us? We have Piscopete. We have Piscopete. It's a white squirrel. Because Brevard is all about the white squirrels. So we have a white squirrel that I guess we keep in a cage. Someone keeps in a cage somewhere. Uh, it, I, don't I don't know. I don't know if they wrangle him up every year. I want to say they just but keep him But Piscopete not only predicts weeks of winter or spring, he does the Super Bowls. Which also this other local groundhog does, which I think they're stealing from Piscopete. Probably Piscopete mm. stealing from them. Who knows? Mm. But yes. He not only predicts the winter thing, he predicts the, the Super Bowl, and I think he's been pretty accurate. I don't know. I don't actually keep track. It's just a thing around here. So, um, something about the excitement of watching a rodent predict, predict the weather. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> we don't have a groundhog, but we have a white squirrel. It's exciting. <laughs> and I think didn't they do it at at, Breck, at, at um. Blue Ridge Bakery, Blue Ridge or something. Bakery so people year. would like crowd into Blue Ridge Bakery yeah. and watch which way I'm he would run. Not sure what they're doing today. Probably something virtual. Yeah, everybody's if we're lucky. virtually. Yeah. <laughs> Life right now, right? No, um, a couple of our knitters. One posted. Bridget, shout out to Bridget. Said it's Groundhog Day, and shout out to Claire. She's like, oh my gosh, I almost forgot. And I'm like, that's understandable. It's still March. And pretty soon it will be March again, and then we'll be doubly confused. So, 
Um, no, but I'm, I finished this. I finished part of this this weekend. I'm going to get up and show it off. You finished the sweater. Well, I finished the body of a sweater. This was supposed to, and it's funny. It's like, it's wonderful if I don't move. And then if I move, it's like, <laughs> I don't know what that was. Anyway, no, um, it's this Monday. is, <laughs> it's our Monday. Oh, speaking of that last Tuesday's episode, I went to go put it in the newsletter. I titled it episode, you know, 97. Mm. This is 99, by the way. <clears throat> and and then usually I have a, a real title, like a name. Yeah. I, I never got around to that, apparently. It just said episode 97 colon. <laughs> Oops. It's been a week. Have I mentioned? Think of variations <laughs> of it's Tuesday, it's Monday. So it's, I, went, I went back in and said, apparently I forgot to name this. That is now the title of the episode. <laughs> so... Um, anyway, this is the sorrel sweater. It has these wonderful drop stitch, dip stitches, I think they're called actually, all over it. They're going to go partially down the sleeve too. Um, it, it wanted, if you didn't want the crop version, which I don't because I got a muffin top. <laughs> Look, you can see it if I do this. <laughs> um, it said, if you don't want the crop top, I almost said, if you don't want the muffin top, <laughs> same thing then you need to go 15 inches from the armholes before you start the Here ribbing. Is. And the ribbing is two inches. And you know what? I actually did. I, I tried not to lose the will to live and, and say, it's almost 15 inches. Tried to go a good solid 15 inches. And I'm actually quite happy. It took a butt ton of yarn, but I'm quite happy with this length. I, I like it. I will not have to do the Picard tug with this length. I will worry about how it's, Lane. Yeah, see, <laughs> she knows me too well. But I already have one sleeve on the needles. See, almost coming off the needles, but on the needles to start the sleeve. But it's probably going to time out for a little while now because I finished part of it. <laughs> and I have so many other things to do. But I'm liking, I think I picked the right torso uh, size. Okay. Like, you know, it's not huge, but it's also not too clingy. Things are going to cling to the girls no matter what, but um, I'm liking it. Did I, I don't know if I showed you all the back. The back's like front, but you know, I got a limbo so you can see it. There's a line but going down the side. side. Not yes. that side. Really. Which side? You know what that line is? That is from when I switched games. This uh, is where the beginning. So yes, this is like, what? There's a line. I probably should have done something on this side to make it match. Um, it might come out when it, when it blocks, but probably not. That is where I was alternating skeins. So what Liz is noticing is very much a thing here. If I move this, this yarn, um, I might've pulled too tight when I was switching, when I was switching skeins and that might block out. Like every time I came to the beginning brown marker, I switched skeins because fiber space, which is this lovely stuff is very tonal. This is this is the four ply version of what I knit this out of. This is the thinner version. But you can see all the color variances in it. And I've been switching skeins to make sure that it blends a little. Like you can see all the color variants up here. I don't know. The the top up here, the collar and the bottom I did with only one skein. Can you see a huge difference? Not really. But People often do that so that when you switch skeins of yarn, total skeins of yarn, you don't have like a line where it's very noticeable that it's a different skein of yarn because that can happen. That more happens with like Mel Brigo and Madeline Tosh, Madeline Tosh, I want to say. Um, even if you buy it all at the same time, you can have vast very color differences. Different. Yeah. Uh, this is so very so tonal. I don't know if it would really matter, but it might. So I was just talking with Liz before coming on camera about how when I do the sleeves, I have about a half skein left of one yarn and the other one is gone. Because that one yarn that was really full, I used for the ribbing at the bottom of this. So I might split that half skein in half. So I blend it with one skein over here until I run out. And then I blend it with one skein over here because it's, it's possible, it may not happen, but it's possible that blending two skeins, one runs out, I, I wind another one that blends with one here and then use those two over here and my sleeves look really different. 
You never know. There's always that risk. But, but yes, it is a noticeable line where I changed yarn. And what's funny is because the, the purl stitches show is on the inside. I don't think there's a line on the. No, you can't really. You tell. can't really. The way I, I was, I was knitting it in, inside out. So I was knitting around and I would pull the yarn in and flip them and pull the yarn back out so I could knit. And it actually shows more on the uh, stockinette side, which usually like the reverse stockinette side, excuse me, the pearl side, which is usually not the side you see. But for this sweater, it's the outside so you can see it. So it'll be an experiment to see if you see it when it's blocked. And if you do, oh well. I'm also thinking I could actually, with some scrap yarn, make a full line on this side. Like I could sew up and down straight through the armpit and pull it a little tight so that it mirrors it mirror, yeah. the other side if this doesn't block out. I can make it look like an intentional seam because there are a lot of sweaters knitting around. If not a lot, there's a few. Uh, Kay Hopkins does this with her sweaters where you put in a pearl stitch right here to give it a faux seam. It actually helps give it a little bit of structure. I, 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 so. I think, um, one of my sweaters calls for uh, a seamy thing, you know, mm -hmm. or at least, if not just one pearl stitch, a uh, pearl knit, pearl knit, you know, yeah, just it something can, to give it a. It can give it a little more. Um, sometimes it's too floppy if it's just knitting around, and so so sometimes you want to give it the seams. People hate seaming, so they like top down sweaters because there's no seaming and sewing. But those those seams give it structure. So depending on your shoulder size and width and, and how they fall, sometimes you want like a set in sleeve looks better on you than a raglan sleeve or an all over increase or the drop sleeve things. I'm not a fan of the drop sleeves, but I think but I there have, are people that the people that love, love it. Them. Yeah. I have the kind of shoulders that bags will fall off of my shoulders if um, if I'm wearing the wrong kind of coat or if I would just carry them around too long. So I guess I have slopey shoulders. I don't know. Which means a set in sleeve might actually give my shoulders more structure. I am not going as far as 80s uh, shoulder pads. No, no. Those but, I cut out even in the 80s. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. By, this buy, shirt looks a, awesome on you. Okay, clip, take clip, it home. Clip, 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 clip. <laughs> what happened to the shoulder pads? I have no idea. What happened to the shoulder pads? They're dumb. <laughs> That's my teenage self speaking. I don't use language like that anymore, at least not in polite company. But yeah. <laughs> no. <Not> again. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that was a fashion thing that I don't know why. Yeah. You'd get like t-shirt material tops with shoulder, with shoulder pads, pads in them, in them. that you could yeah. see through. Like you knew they were there. Yeah. Yeah. I it, was, it was wrong on it so was many levels. So many levels. Oh my gosh. Anyway, but I mean, I mean, now from a from a sweater construction point of view, I could say, you know what, some padding there could be as assisting to give me like more powerful looking shoulders, but not the kind they had in the eighties. All right, so. We we <laughs> teased it a bit on Thursday. Oh, oh, do you want to go there? We could go there. Did go you there. bring there? Of course I did. Yeah. I mean, I forgot it last week, but of course I did. I also may have to make sure I brought this. I I I, I think I'm gonna have to start leaving all the sweaters that I make for the shop. Most of them are home. I think I need to bring them in here and like come in in my old sweaters so and then change into so then we have things here Do the whole mr rogers yes they're all going to be mr rogers sweaters um oh i got to tell someone last week that all about mr rogers sweaters and how his uh mom made them all and they were like oh like this this woman and her daughter it was great um i think it means well I was like, I think I'm going to need a shelf to fold up my sweaters and put them on for safekeeping, but we don't have room in the shop. That's not going to happen. There is the pit of despair, but... There's no shelf space in there. No, really. That's called the pit of despair for a reason. It's a hot mess. Oh my gosh. Okay. Go ahead. So, we, um, we have 
It's right. a race. It's a competition. Happy on. It's neither, depending on who's when in we talk charge. To. Well, not in charge, but it's who's, a friendly who's, rivalry. Who's, who's got more rows done? It depends on <laughs> whether it's a race, a competition. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, you were the one first, right? It's always you, and then I'm like, I want to play too, like with the with the. Um, Big Sully, right? You picked out your colors for this. You were and you were thinking about a fiber space. I've been thinking before, about a feeder brook before. She was like, ooh, I could fi oh I said fiber space. You said fiber space, but it's okay. I've been that's thinking about second, that one too. That's my um, second mess up of the morning. There could be a migraine hit in my way. Well uh, y'all at home keep keep watching. Yeah. Not it won't come on during while we're filming, but you know, if I talk about a migraine later, I'm gonna be you saw it coming. Yeah. Um you but, were you were fantasizing about a feeder brook. <laughs> I have Papillons. I have so many papillons that uh, I will think future papillons ahead, especially when I'm at the shop going. Ooh. If I see her going, hmm, mm. or ooh, I'm like, okay, what papillon will this be? Yeah. So. But you might be nearing. You might be needing to switch off. Well, you're doing some. Other yeah, things. I'm doing some other Sometimes things. Sometimes you got to change it up. You know. I. Oh, but she picked out. The most gorgeous color set. I'm, I meant to bring in a long cord so I can move this onto a longer cord. Not, not right now. Don't listen to me. Um, yes, yes. Uh, I, I was like, I should make a papillon too, but I don't want to copy you, and I don't want to make necessarily a bigger, thicker one like you love making. A, because I don't want to copy her, and B because I should be making things that kind of fit the size and everything of the pattern a little for my customers. That, and she doesn't wear them the same way no. I do. I don't do wraparound, like, like. Over, I do great I grandma do, shawls. She does the I do decorative scurfy shawls. Scurfy which shawls. The papillon kind of does and kind of doesn't. Like, it just looks better laid out or wrapped around you. And it kind of is extra long in the center based on the construction, so a regular triangle wraparound kind of does, doesn't work, but I mean, it does, but it doesn't, it doesn't show off the beauty of the shawl. Yeah. So I tend to make them to hang on the wall, to be quite honest, so other people can make them. Um, so I was like, but what, so what should I do? What should I make? And I was thinking my last attempt at a papillon, I was using the concha, which is a wool and cotton blend and the theory was still to only use a main color and a contrast color, but to follow the moth instructions, which is some of your favorites is the moth. I, I, it's the ending. The, I yeah. mean, I whine and complain all the time about the, 1,025 stitches, but <laughs> I get to try that someday. I, I do it at the end of every one of my puppies. Um, so the moth variation, it, when you buy the pattern, you get the accessory pack for the moth basically, which is like, follow the, the, Papillon, but also like it's side by side. There's a lot of I'm flipping through pages and flipping back and forth right now, except for the things I write stuff out. Yes. So, <laughs> um, I I saw someone on the butterfly knit along group on Facebook who was like, "There's it doesn't tell me like how many to cast on and everything." And I think someone figured out for her that she only had the moth accessory pack, and that the the moth pattern will state. This is not the pattern. You mm -hmm. have to actually have the Papillon pattern it, to go with it. It says follow the, the Papillon pattern, but also, you yeah. know, if you want to change colors in this order and do this during the big section changes and add this here and do the bind off in this different way with the bajillion stitches. So I was like, I, I want to do that. I want to actually change colors. I mean, the idea is that if you pick a, a close color range, you have a fade, right? And it does this cool fade. Your second Papillon, you did that. Yes. The one that's almost been forgotten in the echelon of Papillons. My, it's it's grays and purples. Mm -hmm. and it's really pretty. Um, it, um, and it, it does look like a fade. The, the, with the moth, she recommends picking six color gradient and then a pop of color that doesn't fit anywhere in the gradient and then your contrast and your contrast and and i was like but what am i gonna do like i was looking over at the heritage i was like and liz said what about the Ainu? 
all my good stuff comes from a, a kernel that you have suggested or just everything you've suggested. So, you know, um, and the Ione is this like alpaca and silk, right? It's alpaca and silk. And it's a really light sport weight. So it's essentially almost a fingering weight. It pretty it's much fingering is. weight yardage. It is yardage. I, I bumped up from a four to a five needle um, just, just to give it a little sport room, you know, but it's 50 gram skeins, which means, you know, if you had to pick six colors and then a seventh pop and then an eighth contrast, you weren't killing hundred gram skeins that you might never get through. Um, so this is my contrast. Like, right. Well, we, we picked out, like, if we need that many colors, we've got a wonderful color palette in Aini, but I really was like, well, we'll have to stick to these because these are the closest thing we have to a fade. And you went, ooh. Um, so here are my colors. We've got one, two, this is the dramatic video reveal, two, I could try to put them like there, kind of, whatever, um, two to three. That's aqua or turquoise teal dark blue. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, we have two purples and I'm using them both. So we have a light purple is uh four and a deep velvety like maroony purple is five actually using black for six and then the pop is you show magenta hot pink whatever you want to call it oh my gosh it's lovely so you know like all these lovelies you can't see them down there but um and i have used all but colors five and six because it was so, I was like, oh, I get to use another color. Oh, I get to use another color. So I kept going. Um, <laughs> you, will, you will use color five before you finish section two. Okay. I'm already into section two. It's already longer than, than like, this is sad. I can't really show it off in full brilliance, right? I, I'm one row ahead of you. <laughs> We're back to a competition. Race. When it's I'm a race tomorrow um, or, you know, later. I am working on a few other things right now, which I, I haven't even bothered to show hey, off yet. Hey, I hey. worked on all of this pile as well as this. <laughs> <laughs> I I have yet to show y'all what I've been working on this weekend. But look, I finished, I finished the body of this thing. It's been taking forever. Um, okay, so if I pull that down a little more to show you that looks so colors cool. one and two are up in section one and then uh we've got three two four three right yeah. so down here is looking a little more like a fade like up here it's kind of boom um and then the pop color is using the transition between one and two it's been so much fun i need to get it um this is a 40 inch cord by the way folks and and i am not even through section two yet I need the bigger cord and even the bigger cord is still going to be too short. So let me put a caveat on that. It's too short for Rebecca who likes having the entire thing no, no. laid out on her needles. I can do the whole thing on a 40. I have done the whole thing on a 40. I didn't get a longer cord for the other ones I did. It's too, it's too short to take a picture. Yes. That's what I mean. Yes. I no, no. I was to going to put that caveat in there. Like I have done worsted weight papillons on a 40 inch needle with a thousand 25 26 stitches to bind off all on the 40 inch it's fine if it you you won't run out of of room rebecca needs the longer thing to take pictures. i can't i can't show y'all like i even the picture whoa, see look how pretty that is look at that um the picture that i took for my morning meditation a couple days ago um, ooh, yeah, hold yours up. That could be a good screenshot. More <laughs> done. Um, you have you have a green square inside there. So what? I was gonna go do the green square, but I had to write a, a newsletter yesterday and film my 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 tips and tricks twice because I realized how I was fixing brioche what didn't actually work. So I had to relearn that. That was just wow. Um, no, but um, the morning meditation photo I took, I was halfway through a row. So it ended up looking more like the cowl when I took the photo because it was it was in the middle. So it was like, 
this. Yes. You know, it was like, that's not even gonna, you know, whatever. Yeah, it was just this intersection. Um, Cause it's just hard to photograph. It's like, it's like my Nessie shawl crochet. It's too big to fit in the yeah. picture. So, which is kind of fun. Um, then I get to do roughly artsy photos. Um, so, let's talk about hers before I'm I go back to all my stuff. Look at that. That looks, I really like this section right here yeah. because it looks like it's fading out of the transition. Well, and the blue, like it fades into you're not the dark doing, and then it fades You're in. not doing eyelets I, in I, the transition. I'm right? not. Some of them I do, some of them I don't. You don't have to. You don't like, have to. Okay, the moth variation, if you're going to be doing some of that, um, it's not like you must do this. It's like it has all these suggestions and you do what you want. Some people add eyes like like in the section of what we call the Pokemon balls. Um, in if They're supposed to be in the last section, like to look like a moth with those fake eyes on their wings, right? And some people put them wherever there's Pokemon balls. Do what you I, want. Have fun. It Depending on how really I'm doing or what colors I'm using and if I have a pop or not. I just couldn't figure out anything to put in here. Yeah. So I have a couple of them that don't have Well, so, so you were, were shooting for six colors of feeder book because that's what the pattern says. But what have you done? I, I wound up buying a skein of feeder book the day that you started and I was like, no, no, you can't start until I get home and find all my feeder book because then, you know. Because it's a competition not a race but it's a race well not a competition depending on the day it wasn't going to be either <laughs> but then i couldn't start until she did and now she's ahead of me so whatever yeah you were ahead of me by the you were ahead of we, me and, we and then go you, back took, and forth. you took three to fives and yeah, yeah. so i i have five <laughs> skeins of feeder brook uh -huh. i had four at home and then i bought another one and actually i have more at home i just have but i know right so um, I've been pulling from either the inside or the outside and of a skein of feeder brook, depending on the rope. The, the, the moth version tells you specifically, okay, use color one for sections one and two, and use color two for sections three and four, and blah, 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 you know, like this. This is the order the moth is telling you to use yeah. them in. And you said, no. Nope. I'm, I'm going to change okay. every rope. Because if it, the the shorter rows feeder brook changes are almost color. yeah like it took to row three before I got a noticeable color change feeder brook will change colors but it's so gradual the shorter color changes the shorter sections yeah it, it wasn't showing yeah up. and now like my last couple of rows like this blue and that blue are the same ball but they're different. Mm -hmm. because of so it shows up more in person yeah so i've been inside outside like okay She's what color fun. am i gonna do next that kind of funness i am do, still doing i am doing the moth with the color changey and i think i'm exactly where you are on this one my shadow see that's the thing is like it yeah there's no way to have it be a competition because we are not going to solely work on our race or whatever it's a rivalry because we are never going to only work on one project. Like that's what it would have to be to truly get like who knits faster and who's gonna get through this faster. Is it gonna be Liz because she knows it better? Or is it gonna be me because I might be a faster knitter? Maybe not. We have too many we have too we many. Like to work. Yeah. I, I worked on three Papillons. I started a new project and my crochet fillet, fillet crochet thing. Fillet so crochet just runs, This, my, my shadow happy on is finally where you are so you got to do the nice the, yep yeah. mm -hmm. i was like what so it's hard to see i'm building but things the light here. hits nice and so i started in, oh oh that's attached crap yeah oh and i'm at that same spot ah, in not working this is my warm and squishy for winter that looks, it doesn't have some mohair. It in has it. mohair in the main color. And that's from um, Silver, Silver Threads and Gold yeah. Needles. But the brown is fiber space. Yeah. And it looks so cool. Ooh, it looks so cool. So I'm getting ready to start the uh, Pokemon balls in section two on that one. And then I lost the will to live. Happens. Happens. Losing the will to knit. Yeah. So Friday, I started this. <laughs> 
It's not a thing, Liz. No, no. It's what gonna, is that, Liz? It's gonna be a mile of yarn. Each one of those is 800 meters, mm -hmm. which is is two laps of the track. Four laps of the track is a mile. So I, I did um, the red and teal mm -hmm. last winter, and I threw mohair in with it. And the thing is, the green with the teal looks completely different than the red with the teal. Yeah, it's pretty. Cool. I threw mohair in with that one, so that one's like a yard, a mile and a half. Because when you add up all the miles of mohair, it anyway. And so I started this because we got in some yarn that looked like this, and I was like, ooh, and then I was like, ooh and she got paid i got paid <laughs> and now it's, it's so mine and now the money's me. mine again <laughs> and i thought about throwing Some in mohair yeah but you should have one without mohair but i don't know actually the mohair makes them warmer well that's they're true. they're already my mohair projects at home. they're merino and silk and alpaca in these balls so it's already a warm yarn and then if you want to make it warmer you add mohair. Mohair. I lost the word. It I was like, like how, what? jumped Did out she, of my brain. You just said it. Okay, check back to see if she gets a headache, or maybe it's just uh, sympathy. Whatever. Like, yeah. You live with me too long. I say live because the shock is life. <laughs> um, <laughs> you start acting like me too, or maybe I'm acting like you. I don't know. We've lost track. So this without but i can't figure out what color mohair to put in it that's the problem like yeah because you don't want to take away from those really i don't want to take colors. away from the colors so i'm probably not going to put mohair in it because mohair believe it or not even though it looks fluffy and light and like not even there it changes how it, things look yeah and we don't have perfect matches for this a lot of the yarn in like my red and teal one i added a silver mohair like that really light gray and it changed the look of everything in there. But if I did that to this, it would mute out the, you would anyway, so I'm not. So. It's gonna be so pretty though. Mm -hmm. Cause it's gonna, the one ball is gonna go from light green to dark green. Yeah. And the other one, she's starting from the dark teal and it's gonna go to the light, the light green. It's gonna be really cool. Um, so speaking of alpaca and merino and silk, um, we have a teaser. We have a teaser because because Julia teased me. Julia texted me. She's the spunky sheep. Shout out to Julia. And she's like, hey, how you doing? And I was like, I'm fine. And, and usually when she says, how you doing? Then there's, hey, I need to get this or do you want this? And there was and that's okay. <laughs> but it was, would you be interested in, in a fade set? And we don't really have those in the shop. And, and this is a unique fade set anyway. It's not like a perfect gradient fade set, but it's gonna hopefully be really cool. I was like, she's like, I'll give you one for, a, a, you know, a freebie or comp you one, and then you see if you wanna bring them into the shop. And I was like, yarn I don't have to pay for, what? And yes, please. And she got me, because <laughs> it's so pretty. Um, so what she sent me, we had to kind of guess, uh, which which gradient set we'd get and liz went said it was the fourth color um we had a choice of and liz is like go with the the brighter one let's try it so um they're not all wound up to look pretty anymore because i already started a thing with them this is why my papillon is only as far as it is but it was um i'm already i already don't know where the tag for this one is i think it's at home i think this one was called onyx it's like a dark gray slightly tonal and then there is silver and all of these are sport weight and they are apaca merino and silk and they make my fiber space feel rough it's gorgeous so this to this to um river stone which is a blue um or a brown gray kind of it's kind of like a color we have in fiber space but it's got more brown in it mm -hmm. and then we picked rose gold so this is my fade pack and I don't usually fade things because I kind of have an aversion to it because it might work or it might not. And I'm scared of that. So I don't do it <laughs> to be quite honest. So I'm like, what do I do? And of course, when you look up fades online, you're going to see a whole lot of sweaters that want you to fade. In fact, the sorrel that I did 
was originally designed for a fingering weight and a mohair held together and you and you fade the fingering weights and I just did mine in DK. Boom. And so I looked online and I found this. This is um, apparently it's um, from I think the lingo Claire could tell me because she messaged me about it this morning. The lingo about this is coming from the uh, murder podcast. I'm forgetting which murder podcast. There's a, there's a murder podcast, like, just, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> it's called Stay Out of the Forest, and you can fade it. And look at that. Isn't that cool looking? So it's a crescent shawl. So a crescent shawl is one that kind of all over expands instead of a triangle shawl, which tends to expand in the center and the edges or from the bottom up. A crescent shawl more has a crescent type shape to it, but it's also chevron. It's also got this, this zigzaggy thing going on in it. And I was like, ooh. And it can be designed for a fade, so I'm gonna test it. And this is how far I've gotten, which won't show up much on, um, on screen because it's that really dark gray, but I'm going from the darkest to the lightest. So this will be at the outside edge. I think it's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be massive. I was like, I have so many shawls going, but this is a different type of shawl. And you can't really tell because it's on the needle, but in theory, it's, it's going to do this, like come in where the decrease is and go out where the increase is. It's going to have a zigzaggy shape. It just looks only like crescent until it's off the needles, basically. It might look better if I, like this section might do some chevroning when it's further away from the needles. Yeah. Um, I wanna say I'm about halfway through the skein the rows are getting bigger. It actually just kicked into a new section where there's going, there's like three main, the four main panels right now. It's going to get up, it just started the beginnings of a fifth and a sixth. So it's gonna expand faster. So she recommends how to do a fade is when there's about 20% of this left. So I'm trekking my scale around with me. When there's about 20% of this left, you start alternating every other row with your next color to kind of do a fade. We'll see how it, if it works or not. Regardless, I think I'm gonna have to bring some of Spunky Sheep yarn into the shop because, oh my gosh, this is so luscious. Like yours is probably feeling luscious. It's, it's, it is the same comment co content as this is. Mm -hmm. We don't know if the proportions are exactly the same, but the fibers, but the fiber, the base yeah. fibers are the same. So. Yeah, um, and so it, it feels, it's, it's, a, it's a thicker, yeah, like this is this, fingering weight. This is sport weight, which is the next one up. Um, but this is 328 yards for 100 grams. And yours is like 400 something yards for 100 grams. Her skeins are, are, would you like to say that again? 437 yards. For someone who doesn't like math, she's got a lot of figures in her head. I keep memorizing them because people <laughs> keep asking. It's still math. It's still math. It's numbers. Okay. Yeah. Anyway. It's gross. So, so I want to work on this, but I want to work on this, but, but wait, there's more. Ooh, I wanted to find something else over there. Maybe. Um, but wait, there's more. You, your nephew has a birthday coming. Yeah. That's one thing. That's, that's the the closest thing to my um to my hands right now so my nephew has a birthday coming up so i'm making him the hubby hat out of these two yarns this is a yarn that this colorway is no longer in the shop because i bogarted the last skein of it it's neighborhood fiber company capital luxury sport and it's a tonal brown we've got some really nice splattery colors of this this one left and then um for the other half of the hat because this is going to be a reversible hat I am using um, the Lorna's Laces Shepherd Sport uh, Zombie Barbecue. And what I wanted to, oh. It's kind of doing the same thing that this is. Is it? Kind of. Um, so I'd already made this little guy. So much for caring about my hair. Um, <laughs> Uh, just try it, I think, was yep. this little cowl, right? And it, it's a great gator, it's a great cowl. You there's lots of sizes, lots of weights. It's awesome. It's a great, it's I think a free pattern too. 
this yarn did this and yeah it stacks there it keeps you nice and warm see the stripies it ended up kind of doing a pooly stripey spirally thing with this which i want to say was a hundred and something stitches i forget what needle i was on probably six and i was curious i i started this with fewer stitches and it did like just a modeled i didn't really care for it and i didn't know what was going to happen with my nephew's hat because my nephew's hat too many things on my back um my nephew's hat is supposed to be 100 stitches now i have 99 because my count is off and i'm not fixing it because i've already made half the hat excuse me um it's 100 stitches on a size four and look what it's doing it's doing i didn't know if it was going to pull or not and it is but it's doing something a little thinner than this it's almost the same but not quite like the um the red in it is just this little thread yeah that kind of goes pop 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 and kind of spirals where the red could pool a lot more in this i'm hoping he's really gonna love it because i'll have um he, he's a teenager now and he's he's picky or temperamental about things or like that's awesome or that's dumb um i don't know what he'll think about this but um, I'm hoping he'll have the option because it's reversible. This side is going to mirror this side and then I'm going to shove it inside so he can have the subtle side showing, which is these mottled tones of brown, dark brown, or he can have the crazy side showing and he can pick. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I, I, I just accept it. It's going to be a spirally hat, but I think it's going to be kind of cool. Like this one has big chunks right here there's times when it was big chunks and not. And this one's pretty consistently just thin. Yeah. I only have a few, it's supposed to go to 19 centimeters. And I only have, um, let me see, a straight strand of yarn. Um, I probably have about five right now or so. So we'll see if it keeps doing this. When I get to the decreases at the top, which by the way, they won't show up on camera, but it's a wonderful, um, it's only four, four sets of decreases. It decreases fast enough that you just have this little cool top to it. Um, the spiral is totally going to get messed up for the very top of the hat because with the decreases, the color changes are going to just be cool. But it could do something really fun. It could do so something else really fun. Don't. So he might like it. We'll see. But his birthday's on the 10th. I got to get this in the mail soon. So I'm going to, I did most of this over the weekend. So, you know over like a 24 hour period. So I think I can get it done. It might be all I'm working on for knit next time. But wait, there's more. This is why, you know, all these things I could be working on. Uh, I don't think I showed this one off on camera yet. Cause I want to say I just recently started this. Yeah. So I kept looking at Pocket Watch by um, Daydream Dye Works, which we're supposed to get some more Daydream Dye Works in soon. She's our other local indie dyer. Shout out to Emerald. And I was making the Stormy Sky Shawl out of my Pocket Watch, which is one of my favorite colors of hers. And we always get new colors in every time. Sometimes there's overlaps. Often there's not. I don't know or think Pocket Watch is going to come back into the shop anytime soon, but all of her colors are luscious. So. Um, this is Hohi Locatelli just published, and this is before I started the Stay Out of the Forest. Um, Hohi Locatelli published the Lightweight Hipster. The Hipster, I want to say, was like a worsted weight shawl with these elongated stitches that crisscross. Lightweight Hipster is a, is a crescent shawl. I hadn't done a crescent shawl in a very long time, or maybe since the beginning of the pandemic. Feels very long time to me. And it'll, it's only supposed to take one skein of yarn. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, I've lost the will to knit on the stormy sky. So I ripped it out and I started this. And it is on my Addies, which means I can't really show it off nicely without having it bobble. But um, it's doing really cool things. And take a look at it has those the elongated coolest stitches. Drop stitches. Look at that. If I stretch it, when I block it, that's going to look so cool. There's a lace section in between these two sets of drop stitches that crisscross. It's actually not that hard to make them crisscross. Um, they look all wrinkly right now if I let go of it because 
I didn't do anything to this yarn after ripping it out. Like you can see it's all kinky. The horrors. The horrors. But I'm I'm hoping blocking will take care of it. Blocking will take care of it. Like the, the most recent Vogue knitting is talking about to reclaim your yarn, steam it and do this to it, do that. I just knit with it and then block it. And you can stay tuned to see if I ever finish this, because how many projects have I just shown off? We can see if the blocking will actually work. We have absolutely no problems with starting new projects. Yeah. In fact, we given do. the choice, I will start a new project rather than work on one that is ongoing. It's kind of sad. Because I think I have knitters who are like, but how much do you need for this? And I'm like, I don't I don't know. I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> it's too much fun. Like the zigzag scarf has made progress, but not enough to really show you with the fiber spades. I'll see if I can make more progress this week before I show that off. Um, I think that's it. I think everything else is kind of in a stasis point where you'd be like, that doesn't look any different than what you showed me last week. So if anyone wants to see a project I'm working on that hasn't made an appearance recently, you need to let us know and I will bring it in. Other than that, you know, what I work on out over the weekend is going to make maybe an appearance. So um, we have a 10 o'clock appointment. Yes. So we should probably go get ready for that because that might require a lot of this table space and, and there's no space on the table right now. Um, so we love you and we miss you and we hope you have enjoyed looking at our projects and yeah. and at what'd you do? If, if you're working with straight needles. Did you drop a needle? Drop it. Oh, it's the, over there. Yeah. It, it went that way. Um, it's not like the round needles that you can hear the circular. Where they're connected. And up the, the, the... <laughs> it goes bye-bye. It went bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> so, which is a good thing because we have to stop. So, great point. Well, I so was at the end of a row and it just, <laughs> I, I'm so used to with my circular needles, just dropping the needle and did you actually just drop I, I did drop it out of my hands and, and then I went, oh crap. Have it. Yeah. <laughs> um, join us for knit night tonight. It's virtual sit and stitch as always. Um, my picture for it was, um, was the cat sat on my knitting bag one of the last knit nights it was funny because he does he can't fit in there he's a big kid he thinks he can't he, he thinks he, he was trying to get comfortable i i don't know what was, what was going on with him but um so yeah come come for the knitting stay to see if my cat attacks me oh <laughs> it's, it's like nascar it's <laughs> my parents thought that was a very funny joke this weekend mm -hmm. mm -hmm. anyway um so it's 6 to 9 p.m um on zoom use the shop phone number 828-877-3550. It's Tuesday and Friday from 6 to 9 Eastern Standard Time. So um, there is one tonight. And I'm going to hopefully finish this hat and do other things. But tomorrow we're going to try to sell you stuff. I don't know what yes. yet. We haven't discussed. We, we don't. don't generally discuss until about 8.56 in the morning <laughs> what tomorrow. Are we gonna do? Ah! <laughs> okay. Um, that's not a thing. Not a thing. And Thursday. Thursday. Dear Becky and Lizzie, I we have, have one, one or two. Oh, we have oh, another oh. one coming, but it, it might be in a real letter form, so it might not get to us before Thursday. We'll address it the following week. So you can write, it's our it's our advice column session where we can expound and wax philosophical on the subject of your choice if you give us a question. And so you would write Dear Becky and Lizzie in the Dear Abby style at um, Sundragon Art and Fiber. 35 South Broad Street, Brevard, North Carolina, 28712, or to get to us faster, you can email me, liz at sundragonartandfiber.com. All spelled out. We do not have a Saturday sit and stitch this weekend because if we did it every weekend, we would die. We would love it, but we would die. So um, the next one is February 20th. Stay tuned, more fun things to show and talk about and see where we get to on our Papillons. I gotta figure out where I'm putting this one when it's done, but you know, that's a, that's a thing for another day. Winter is coming, she mm -hmm. might have to wear it. Yeah, I have no options of things to wear for winter. No, no. Cause your sweaters are still sleeveless. Well, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> all right. We will see you all later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Wish us luck getting through the day, and you'll see if we made it in at night. Sit and stitch. We may. We may know that. <laughs> if the camera is on, the magic portal is open. We made it. Bye.